Welcome. I'm Archie Gottesman. I'm one of the co-founders of Jubilon. There are thousands of us together tonight, and this Seder is going to be amazing. Um, like it says in our Haggadah, whether this is your first Seder or your 107th, and whether you've cleaned out your home of every last crumb of hummus, which is food that has leavening that we don't have on Passover, or you plan to eat an English muffin for breakfast tomorrow, it doesn't matter. The Seder is a chance for all of us to be taken on a journey from slavery to freedom and to join the millions of Jews and non-Jews from all over the world who are doing the exact same thing. Jubilog's mission is to make sure that everyone feels like they belong. Now, I can see um, that many of you have brought your Seder plates and your Jubilong Haggadah. Okay, that means you win. Thanks for coming. I'm just kidding. Um, okay, I can't see you guys. The camera doesn't work that way. Um, but we have lots of fun in store, including Venmo cash prizes for finding the virtual Afikomen. But more on that later. Now, this Jubilong Haggadah is our guide for tonight. It's on the website at jubilong.com, and we'll always let you know what page you're on. But everything you need to read, this is really important, everything you need to read, to say, and to sing for tonight's Seder will be on the screen. If you want, turn on the closed captions if you want subtitles. You just click the little box that says CC at the bottom of the screen. Um, and also, feel free to use live chat if you have questions or you just want to say happy Passover um, or say hi. Now, normally at a Passover Seder, it's going to blow your mind, you guys. Normally at a Passover Seder, you know how you go around the table and like everybody takes a turn reading through the Haggadah. Um, this is what we are simulating tonight uh, with all of our readers. And it's it's just so cool. you'll just wait till you see it, but it's that's what we've been trying to simulate. So when you see different people reading, it's going to remind you of a table. Okay, we're going to start off with one of my favorite Ju Jubilong rituals. It's called Ruth Smith. Now, newsflash. Many people in the Jewish community are married to or in love with someone who is not Jewish which honestly makes our community richer. We name this ritual Ruth Smith after Ruth, as in the book of, as in the great grandmother of King David, and was one of the first to make a decision to join the Jewish people. Okay, so first we make Ruth Smith, which is a combination of almonds, almonds, raisins, and chocolate chips. Okay. And the idea is that when you mix all, is that each of these ingredients is really delicious on their own, but when they're mixed together, they're even better. It's like a delicious Jewish trail mix. Um, now, those of you who are with us tonight, this is really important. Those of you who are with us tonight who are not Jewish, this blessing is for you. And it's honestly not always easy to receive a blessing. It's easier to give a blessing. So it's not easy to receive one. So for those of you who are not Jewish, I want you to just take a deep breath and listen. May everyone who shares in a Jewish life feel welcome and integrated. We lovingly acknowledge the diversity of our community and are deeply grateful for the love and support you provide by opening your heart to Judaism, no matter how big or small a part in your day. Your presence at this Jewish experience is valued. It is not taken for granted because not everyone in this broken world will sit at a Shabbat dinner or attend a Passover Seder. We are a very small people and history has made us smaller. As we once again see a rise in hatred and hear fear in the voices of our community, we are grateful for your presence. 
We pray with all our hearts that all you give to the Jewish people will come back to you and fill your life with joy. Amen. There's an elephant in the room that would like some attention, and it's time we give it to him because it might literally be a matter of life and death. The elephant has been around as long as the Jewish people, but he's gotten a lot meaner and scarier since last Passover. The elephant is anti-Jewish hatred. There's the familiar white supremacy movement that hates everyone that doesn't look like them. The more subtle, I don't really mean it when I talk crap about Jews kind, and a relatively new and insidious form of hostility directed at Israel, which crosses the line of anti-Jewish hate far too often. Hate is hate. Jews, Christians, Muslims, Hindus, atheists, everyone is worse off for it. Are we gonna end it? No, unfortunately. But that doesn't give us permission to throw our hands up and accept it, make excuses or discount it. It's exactly the opposite. We must talk about it, write about it, learn about it, call it out. This is a time for all Jews and allies to be extra courageous. Now that we have acknowledged the elephant, let's not let him plunder the table. If we do, we'll never get to the fun. But Satyrs end with the phrase next year in Jerusalem, and we may be going out on a limb here, but we're guessing that most of us won't be in Jerusalem next year. We hope not to be in front of our computers either, but no matter where we are and who we are with, will it let us remember that true hate is never little. It is never unimportant and it should never, ever be ignored. Hi, everybody. It's Cory Booker. I am so honored those that you belong invited me to be a part of this Seder. It's sort of the greatest of all, uh, in my opinion, uh, spirit of Abraham, that he was said to be favored by God because he kept his tent open on all four sides. The fact that you would welcome me to be, take part uh, in this a tradition that has gone over centuries and centuries and centuries really lifts me. Uh, I've had a long experience uh, taking part in Passover seders uh, since I was very young and have always had them be a staple of my year, not only reminding me about uh, this very, very important part in uh, human history, but also how important this story was in the African-American tradition and to the understanding of this idea of escaping uh, slavery, uh, how powerful it was. Uh, for my ancestors who were slaves, uh, yearning for freedom, yearning for liberation. Passover remembered. Pack nothing. Bring only your determination to serve and your willingness to be free. Don't wait for the bread to rise. Take nourishment for the journey, but eat standing. Be ready to move at a moment's notice. Do not hesitate to leave your old ways behind. Fear, silence, submission. Do not take time to explain it to the neighbors. Tell only a few trusted friends and family members, then begin quickly before you have time to sink back into the old slavery. Set out in the dark. I will send fire to warm and encourage you. I will be with you in the fire and I will be with you in the cloud. You will learn to eat new food and find refuge in new places. I will give you dreams in the desert to guide you safely home to that place you have not yet seen. The stories you tell one another around your fires in the dark will make you strong and wise. Outsiders will attack you. Some will follow you. And at times you will weary and turn on each other from fear and fatigue and blind forgetfulness. You have been preparing for this for hundreds of years. I am sending you into the wilderness to make a way and learn my ways more deeply. Those who fight you will teach you. Those who fear you will strengthen you. Those who follow you may forget you. Only be faithful. That alone matters. Some of you will die in the desert and for the way is longer than anyone imagined. Some of you will give birth. Some will join other tribes along the way and some will simply stop and create new families in a welcoming oasis. Some of you will be so changed by weathers and wanderings that even your closest friends will have to learn your features as though for the first time. Some of you will not change at all. Sing songs as you go and hold close together. You may at times grow confused and lose your way, 
continue to call each other by the names I've given you to remember who you are. You will get where you are going by remembering who you are. Tell your children lest they forget and fall into danger. Remind them even they were not born into freedom, but under a bondage they no longer remember, which is still with them if unseen. So long ago you fell into slavery, slipped into it unaware, out of hunger and need. Do not let your children sleep through the journey's hardship. Keep them awake and walking on their own feet so that you both remain strong and on course. So you will be the first of many waves of deliverance on these desert seas. Do not go back. I am with you now. And I am waiting for you. The over 1,200 people of you uh, watching out there, uh, we're going to do a little song right now. We're going to sing a... Uh, there's no Seder like our Seder. If you're following along in the uh, Haggadah, uh, it's uh, right next to Passover Remembered on the bottom. Uh, I know you can't hear each other, but please uh, sing along at home. There's no Seder like our Seder, like no Seder I know. Everything about it is a lachic, nothing that the Torah won't allow. Listen how we read the whole Agada. It's all in Hebrew, cause we know how. There's no Seder like our Seder. We tell a tale that is well. Moses took the people out into the heat. They baked the matzah while on their feet. Now isn't that a story that just can't be beat? Let's go on with the show. The day ends, the earth turns from sunshine to dusk to darkness. We assume for ourselves the task of kindling candles to light the dark corners of our world. We still live in perilous times, behind us though receding into the memories of even the oldest among us. We can still sense the fires of Auschwitz and Hiroshima. Before us, the threat of acts of terrorism and gun violence and of course, sickness. We gather tonight to create from fire, not the heat of destruction, but the light of instruction. Indeed, to see more clearly the wisdom, strength, and caring that glows from within each of us. Now it's time to light the candles at, and we're gonna do a Hebrew and English blessings. We always do both at Jubilong because, well, Hebrew for like, tradition and English because, well, most of us don't speak Hebrew. Um, so I'm going to light the candles and then going to sweep the light three times over and bring the light into our hearts. You're going to do this with me. And then we're going to cover our eyes and do the prayer. Okay, so we're going to do it now. So you sweep your hands three times. So three. And you cover your eyes and sing with me. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu melchalam Asher kiddushanu v'mitzvotav Vitzivanu l'havlik ner Shel yom tov And that means we praise God, spirit of everything, who has directed us to kindle the holiday lights. May these candles, lit on the festival of freedom, bring light into our hearts and our minds. May they renew our courage to act for justice and freedom here and now. May they illuminate the path to truth, justice, and peace and health. And now I'm gonna to go to Alex for some wine. Shalom everyone, it is time for the first glass of wine, the first of four we'll have tonight. 
So uh, raise a glass and join me in saying Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Halam Borei Peri Hagathen. And now the English. Uh, we praise God, spirit of everything, who creates the fruit of the vine. Amen. Hi, L'chaim. I'm Alicia Reiner, and I am so grateful to be here tonight with you all. Thank you so much for joining us from all over the world. I love feeling like my friends are here. I love Passover because for me, it's about celebrating stories of hope and courage and survival and miracles and times where humans walked through some crazy shit like plagues and endured. Wow, that sounds actually quite familiar to this moment. Anyway, now is the time that we describe the Seder plate and what's on it and why. And I wanna start by saying whatever you have in front of you, even if it is whatever screen is enough. We are all doing the best we can at this moment and it is so awesome that we are all here together telling the story. So die any to that. Now we are gonna start with the salt water. I'm going to mix the salt and the water together. And in doing this ritual with intention, it becomes more than salt water. It becomes the memory of sweat and tears that our ancestors, the Israelite slaves and all enslaved people in all of history went through. It represents the sweat of those who are keeping us healthy and safe today. And it represents the tears for those we have lost or will lose. So first of all. And now my beautiful daughter will share the Karpas with us. Okay. Karpas are greens, signify rebirth and nature and springtime. Your lash or parsley or arugula or frozen spinach, whatever you got, is the promise of a new life, light and joy that are coming. Let's dip the green into the salt water together while I say the blessing. blessing. We praise God, spirit of everything, who creates the fruit of the earth. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Puri HaAdama. Amen. And now my sweet husband, David Allen Bash, will share with you about the shank bone. The roasted lamb shank bone commemorates the Paschal lamb, the sacrifice made the night that the Israelites fled Egypt that we just heard about in the story of Passover or Passover. Uh, now, I'm in a place where we could not find a lamb bone or a beet or anything, but um, uh, no joke, we did uh, discover uh, this little guy. Uh, so he's going to have to do, it's kind of a seafood um, shank bone tonight. <clears throat> um, now, I get to share with you about the maror. The maror, or bitter herb, is usually horseradish, which we actually found tonight. But again, whatever you have is perfect. Daikon, uh, a Chinese mustard packet, or if you have nothing, you can just think about something that makes you feel bitter. Um, whatever it is, it represents the bitterness of slavery. And this is my favorite part every year because I love to think mm -hmm. about what am I a slave to even today? What do I let myself be enslaved to? What is it FOMO? Is it social media? Is it doing instead of being? What am I resentful and bitter about? The roasted egg. The egg is a symbol in so many cultures, like Easter coming up. It signifies springtime and fertility and renewal and my favorite interpre interpretation. Like an egg, the hotter the wa water, the stronger we get. Yeah, 
Yes. <laughs> Uh, this is the Haro set. It is traditionally a mixture of apples, nuts, wine, and cinnamon. But again, whatever you got is fine. And this represents the mortar used by the Hebrew slaves to make bricks. Now, a newer aspect of the Seder plate is the orange. The orange is a symbol of fruitfulness and love and inclusion of our LGBTQ plus friends in the Jewish community and all over the planet. We spit the seeds of homophobia, <laughs> and we welcome all. Oh, and I almost forgot hand sanitizer. Since, you know, salt is not soap and not kosher for hand washing, I have my handy dandy hand sanitizer right on the Seder plate. Now we will talk about matzah. Now, for those of you who don't know, the reason we eat matzah this night is it represents the quick flight of our ancestors from Egypt. When we were told that we had to leave, we grabbed whatever dough we had and we ran before we, it had a chance to rise. And I notice I say I instead of they or we as opposed to they because that's part of the storytelling that we are they and they are we and we are all doing this together. Now we take three pieces of matzah and break the middle in half. I guess that's the middle. And this is the afakomen, which means dessert in Greek. Now, normally the afakomen is hidden and the kids need to find it before the Seder can be finished. <laughs> yes, that would be you. <laughs> Uh, this tradition was started like the four questions, by the way, to keep all the little kids interested in the Seder. You'll get instructions in a little while about how to find tonight's afikomen, but for now, hold up the three pieces of matzah and say, oh, there you go. this is on page 12 now, I think. We skipped a lot, which is good. And we say together, this, this is, is the bread of poverty, poverty which, which our ancestors ate in the land of Egypt. Egypt. All who are hungry, come and eat. All who are needy, come and celebrate Passover with us. This year we are here. Next year we will all be in Israel. This year we are slaves. Next year we will all be free. Now the blessing for the matzah is Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Hamotzi Lechem Min Ha'aret. Amen. We praise God, spirit of everything, who brings bread from the land. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu malcha olam, asher kitshanu b'mitzvotav, v'tzivan al achilat matzah. Blessed are you, spirit of everything, who commands us to eat matzah. And this year, not in your Haggadah, I'm going to pick up a fourth piece of matzah. If you have matzah, Grab it and do it with me as I say this. In this painful time, and while we are all here together, we are all missing those who are not with us. To them and to all those who are suffering, this matzah is for them and we hold them close to our hearts. Amen. Beshert, Destiny, Irena Klepsis. These words are dedicated to those who died. Because they had no love and felt alone in the world. Because they were afraid to be alone and tried to stick it out. Because they could not ask. Because they were shunned. Because they were sick and their bodies could not resist disease. Because they played it safe. Because they had no connection. Because they had no faith because they felt they did not belong and wanted to die. Because they had no love and felt alone in the world. These words are dedicated to those who died. Because they were loners and liked it. Because they acquired friends and drew others to them. Because they drew attention to themselves and always got picked. Because they took risks. Because they were too stubborn and refused to give up. Because they asked for too much. These words are dedicated to those who died because a card was lost and a number was skipped. Because a bed was denied. 
because a place was filled and no other was left. These words are dedicated to those who died. Because someone did not follow through. Because someone was overworked and forgot. Because someone left everything to God. Because someone was late. Because someone did not arrive at all. Because someone told them to wait and they just couldn't any longer. These words are dedicated to those who died. Because death is a punishment. Because death is a reward. Because death is the final rest. Because death is eternal rage. These words are dedicated to those who died. These words are dedicated to those who survived. Because their second grade teacher gave them books. Because they did not draw attention to themselves and got lost in the shuffle. Because they knew someone who knew someone else who could help them and bumped into them on a corner on a Thursday afternoon. Because they played it safe. Because they took risks. Because they were lucky. These words are dedicated to those who survived. Because they knew how to cut corners because they drew attention to themselves and always got picked. Because they had no principles and were hard. These words are dedicated to those who survived. Because they refused to give up and defied statistics. Because they had faith. And trusted in God. Because they expected the worst and were always prepared because they were angry. Because they could ask. Because they mooched off others and saved their strength because they endured humiliation, because they turned the other cheek, because they looked the other way. These words are dedicated to those who survived. Because life is a wilderness and they were savage. Because life is an awakening and they were alert. Because life is a flowering and they blossomed. Because life is a struggle and they struggled. Because life is a gift and they were free to accept it. These words are dedicated to those who survived. The ship. I'm Joanna Coles, and I am thrilled to be here at my first virtual Seder. And technically, I'm not actually Jewish, but when I moved here from London to New York 22 years ago, I loved the rituals that my Jewish friends had, and I felt so welcomed when they invited me to Seder uh, and to Hanukkah and to celebrate the Jewish tradition that I really became a Jew by proxy, I guess you could say. Uh, and I'm really thrilled to be part of this. Thank you, Archie. And uh, I have a reading uh, called This Year We Are Slaves. What does that mean? We're slaves because yesterday our people were in slavery and memory makes yesterday real for us. We're slaves because today there are still people in chains around the world and no one can be truly free while others are in chains. And we're slaves because freedom means more than broken chains. Where there is poverty and hunger and homelessness, there is no freedom. And where there is prejudice and bigotry and discrimination, there's no freedom. And where there is violence and torture and war, there's no freedom. And where each of us is less than he or she might be, then we are not free. Not yet. And who this year can be deaf to the continuing oppression of the downtrodden? Who can be blind to the burdens and the rigors that are now to be added to the most vulnerable in our midst? And if these things be so, who among us can say that he or she is free? Mani sana halayla haza Miko halayla Miko halayla Shebeho halayla Ani rochin Hametsu matza Hametsu matza Halayla haza Halayla haza Kula Maro, Maro, 
and matzah, and on this night only matzah. On all other nights we eat any kind of vegetables. Why tonight do we eat better vegetables? Maror. On all other nights we don't dip our food even once, and on this night we dip twice. On all other nights we eat sitting up straight or leaning. Why tonight do we lean to the left? My show! So here we are, ready to tell the story of Passover, which is called the Magid. This, this is it, guys. This is the heart of Passover, because we never, ever want to forget that our ancestors were slaves. Because, like, our history shapes us. What our ancestors went through lives in each one of us. The joy and the sorrow. So. We can't forget that we were slaves once, and the best way not to forget is obviously to tell the story. Because when you tell the story, it lives on. It takes a life of its own, and it lasts. Now, every year in the Jubilant Haggadah, the Magid is done in a skit. And it's a huge crowd pleaser because everyone loves a good skit. Um, and you're all gonna love doing that next year um, at your tables. But this year, we have a special treat. We called upon some of our favorite comedians to figure out a way to tell the story. And they did not disappoint. And with that, I bring you the story of Passover. This is the story of Passover. Okay, so here's what happened. About 2,500 years ago, there's this evil Pharaoh guy. Not like Ronan Pharaoh. This is a long time ago. He enslaves all the Jews in Egypt and makes them build pyramids. It's not a good idea. Jews building things. Y'all, they didn't have a union or anything. But here's the thing about the Jews. They take that whole be fruitful and multiply thing very seriously. I mean, they are multiplying their brains out. And Pharaoh's like, this could be very bad for me. There's so many Jews. What if they rise up against me and my army someday? I mean, that's a lot of Jews. So Pharaoh does what any reasonable slave-owning dictator would do. He decrees that any son born to a Jew be drowned in the sea. Yes. Can we say evil? Yikes. Like super evil? Yikes. Now there's this Jewish woman named Yochebed. Let's try that together, Yochebed. And she's down at the Nile River. She obviously doesn't want to drown her son, right? I mean, who wants to drown their son? So she makes a basket out of reeds. She's crafty that way. She could also make a nice sweater. She would have so many followers on Pinterest. She puts the baby in the basket, sets it afloat. And then she gets the hell out of there. But she tells her daughter Miriam to hide in the brush and keep an eye on the basket and make sure everything's okay. So Miriam's watching and she sees this Egyptian princess, one of Pharaoh's daughters, come down to the Nile to bathe. And the princess is like, O-M-G. A Jewish baby, how cute. I don't know why she's Australian. I'm gonna adopt him, and P.S. I'm naming him Moses. Which means drawn from the water. Miriam sees all this and convinces the princess to give Moses back to Yocheved to nurse and raise. But technically, Moses is Pharaoh's grandson. So a pretty important dude. Well, skip ahead, skip ahead, skip ahead. One day, Moses is out and about, and he sees a burning bush. As one does. And then he hears the voice of God. Moses! Moses! Moses. God's not a guy. 
Moses! Do me a favor. I need you to go to Pharaoh and tell him to let all the Jews out of Egypt. Tell them to leave their homes and everything they have and follow you into the wilderness immediately. You know, tell them to leave the houses. Do not pass go. Just leave their chickens. Do not stop to collect $200. Just leave it. This is serious. Do it now. And Moses is like, uh, um, uh, um, uh, 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 excuse, excuse me? me? First of all, why me? And second of all, you might have noticed that I have a speech impediment. Moses had a speech impediment. And God is like, look. Chill, dude. First of all, hate to break it to you, but you're a Jew. Plus, I'm going to lay a lot of heavy stuff on Pharaoh. To convince him to do this. God is no joke. And as far as your speech problem, don't even worry about it. Get your brother Aaron, nice boy. I'll tell you what to say. And then you tell Aaron what to say. And then he'll tell Pharaoh what to do. It's like a biblical game of telephone. Cut to Moses and Aaron in Pharaoh's palace. And they're trying to beseech him to free all the Jews. And Pharaoh's like, as if. And Aaron warns Pharaoh that if he doesn't let the Jews go free, all kinds of stuff is going to happen to the Egyptians. Bad stuff. And Pharaoh's like, uh, I don't believe in your God. So bring it on, Jews. Now we come to the part of the story with plagues. First, the rivers turn to blood. Ugh. Freaky. Then frogs everywhere. Everywhere. Then lice. Then flies. Then boils. Then COVID-19. Wait, that's not right. Eczema? Maybe eczema. That's not right. Then hail. Then locusts. Then darkness. After each plague, Pharaoh tells Moses, Okay, that's it. I give up. Just tell God to make the plague stop and I'll free the Jews. But then each time he changes his mind. I dated someone like that once. So then God comes to the last plague, the grand finale of Plagues. The killing of the firstborn. You don't want to start with that. That's way too flashy. Sounds like a movie, but it's not. Saves it for the end. And God tells Moses, listen, I don't want the angel of death to accidentally kill any of the Jewish firstborn. So tell all the Jews to smear some animal blood on their homes. And when I see the blood, I'll know to pass over those homes and spare the firstborn. You get it? Pass over. I see the blood and I pass over it. Get it? Pass over. Pass over. Pa Passover! You see how this works? Clever. <laughs> okay, okay. So after this last awful plague, Pharaoh is like, I am done. For real. Like, Jews, just get the hell out of Egypt. But Moses and Aaron tell the Jews, you better hurry up, because you know this guy's been known to change his mind. Like, a, a lot. lot. He's a flip-flopper. So pack all your stuff and let's go. The Jews pack up and leave so fast that the bread they were baking for the trip didn't even get a chance to rise. Cut to matzah, unleavened bread, constipation. So now the Jews are on the run and they're at the edge of the Red Sea, but then Pharaoh changes his mind again. How am I going to get all my stuff built without these Jewish slaves? I'm changing my mind again. Me, 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 me. So now he sends his Egyptian armies after the Jews. Luckily, the Jews have a bit of a head start. I mean, thank God they didn't wait for the bread to rise then they wouldn't have had the head start. They're already at the edge of the Red Sea when Pharaoh does his 180 again. But they're also trapped, right? Because the Egyptian armies are closing in. So then God speaks to Moses and says, Hey, Moses! You want to see a magic trick? You know that schmutzy old walking stick you've been carrying around? Which really needs to be cleaned, by the way. Well, lift that over your head. So Moses raises the staff and the entire Red Sea parts. The whole thing just parts. Can you imagine? Woo! What kind of sold out shows he would have in Vegas with that? Whoa. Hottest show in town. So now there's this long, dry, sandy hallway through the middle of it. And the Jews are like, whoa. Well, that's awesome. But they were more like, well, that is awesome. Like the beach. And they all walk down the sandy hallway and cross the entire Red Sea. But just then, the Egyptian army show up. And the commander is like, we're going to go right down the center of that sandy hallway. That's exactly what he sounded like, by the way. But when they try to do that, God unparts the seas, so they all drown. Okay. Moses and his people are free. Finally. 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 But now the Jews are wandering the desert. And they're quetching. Because they're Jews. The sun is too hot. We're tired, Moses. Can't there be a breeze? We are hungry, Moses. Oh, I can't with the sand in my face. I should have not left my sunglasses. All right, I'm going overboard with the quetching. So God sends manna to them. Manna, which is literally food falling from the sky. And whatever your favorite food is, that's what manna tastes like. Vegan Peking duck. So God watches over the Jews. And even though it takes them 40 years, that's right, 40 years to finally reach the promised land of Israel, 
they reach it. And this is why we celebrate Passover. To give thanks for our freedom. To make sure our children. And their children. And their children's children. And the children of them. And all the children. Know the story. We wish you all a happy. Healthy. Safe Passover. Next year in Israel. And next year, may we all be together. At the same table. Be able to hug and shake hands. And steal kugel off each other's plates. Dip our hands in the charosis and. Wait, that's not right. Chag Sameach. Happy Pesach. Okay, now feel free to do this at home, even if you're older than 11. We're about to do the 10 plagues as we rejoice at our deliverance from slavery. We acknowledge that our freedom was hard earned. We regret that our freedom came at the cost of Egyptian suffering. Now we pour out a drop of wine for each of the plagues that we endured as we recite them to signify having a little less sweetness in our celebration. So go ahead and dip a finger. I like to use my pinky. Sure, or a spoon into your wine glass for a drop of each of the plagues. Blood. Frogs. Ribbit, 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 ribbit. Lice. Beasts. <laughs> Cattle disease. Moo, bleh, moo, bleh. Boils. Hail. <laughs> Locust. Darkness. And the death of the firstborn. She is in fact my firstborn. Our modern world faces new plagues every day like the virus that is keeping us from sitting together at this moment. So let's once more take a little sweetness out of our cups together as we recite the names of these modern plagues. Hunger, war, terrorism, greed, bigotry, injustice, poverty, destruction of the earth, indifference to suffering, and anti-Jewish hatred. This is a special prayer for healthcare workers by Rabbi Ayala Cohen. May the one who blessed our ancestors bless all those who put themselves in harm to care for the sick. The doctors, the nurses, the orderlies, technicians and home health aides, EMTs and pharmacists who navigate the unfolding dangers of the world each day to tend to those they have sworn to help. Bless them in their coming home and bless them in their going out. Ease their fear, sustain them. Source of all breath, healer of all beings, protect them and restore their hope. Strengthen them that they may bring strength. Keep them in health that they may bring healing. And help them know again a time when they can breathe without fear. Bless the sacred work of their hands. And may this plague pass speedily among us and in our days. Amen. a contemporary Dayenu. So let's bring Dayenu into the present. We are grateful, and yet what miracles and accomplishments would be enough, Dayenu, in today's world, for us to be truly satisfied? When all workers of the world receive just compensation and respect for their labors, enjoy safe, healthy, and secure working conditions, and can take pride in their work, Dayenu. When governments end the production of devastating weapons, securing the knowledge that they will not be necessary, Dayenu. When the air, water, fellow creatures, and beautiful world are protected. Dayenu. When all politicians work honestly for the good of all. Dayenu. When all women and men are allowed to make their own decisions on matters related to their own bodies and their relationships without discrimination or legal consequence. Dayenu. When people of all ages, genders, races, religions, cultures, and nations respect and appreciate one another. Dayenu. When all children grow up in freedom, 
without hunger and with the love and support they need to realize their full potential. When all people have access to the information and care they need for their physical, mental, and spiritual well-being, when no elderly person in our society has to fear hunger, cold, or loneliness, Dayenu. When the people of the Middle East and people living in strife are able to create paths to just and lasting peace, Dayenu. When people everywhere have the opportunities we have to celebrate our culture and to use it as a basis for progressive change in the world, Dayenu. If tonight each person could say, this year I worked as hard as I could toward my goals for improving the world. So that one day all people can experience joy, freedom, and health. Dayenu. Dayenu. Now for everyone's favorite song of the Seder, on page 21, please join me in singing Dayenu. Ilu hotzi hotzi anu hotzi anu mi mitzrayim hotzi anu mi mitzrayim dayenu day dayenu day dayenu day dayenu 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 day dayenu day dayenu day dayenu dayenu Ilu natan natan lanu natan lanu et ashabat natan lanu et ashabat dayenu day dayenu day dayenu day dayenu 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 day dayenu day dayenu day dayenu 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 ilu natan natan lanu natan lanu et tatoa et tan lanu et tatoa dayenu hey dayenu 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 okay Back for more wine. Uh, time for cup two. I should know that. Uh, and the prayer is the same. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech alam, barei peri hagafen. Amen. Uh, thank you, God. We praise God, spirit of everything, who creates the fruit of the vine. We're back with one more song here on page 23. This is uh, just a tad of chorosit sung to the tune of Spoonful of Sugar. And uh, please sing along at home. Here we go. Oh, back in Egypt long ago, the Jews were slaves under Pharaoh. They sweated and toiled and labored through the day. So when we gather Pesach night, we do what we think right. Maror, we chew to feel what they went through. Just a it helps the bitter herbs go down, the bitter herbs go down, the bitter herbs go down. Just a tad of chorus, it helps the bitter herbs go down in the most disguising way. So after years of slavery, they saw no chance of being free. Their suffering was the only life they knew. But baby Moses grew up tall and said he'd save them all. He did, and yet we swear we won't forget that a tad of corrosive helps the bitter herbs go down. The bitter herbs go down. The bitter herbs go down. Just a tad of corrosive helps the bitter herbs go down. Refill our water glass, preparing for the taste that turns us red. Although Maror seems full of minuses, it sure does clear our sinuses. But what to do? It's hard to be a Jew. Just a tad of chorus, it helps the bitter herbs go down. The bitter
Hi, it's me again, your favorite person, the person who allows you to drink. Uh, we are now blessing the third glass of wine. Baruch and I, you should know this by now, Berei. Oh, no, I don't. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech halam, berei peri hagafen. We praise God who made the fruit of the wine. Especially this year, a prayer for our country. Our God and God of our ancestors, bless this country and all who dwell within it. Help us to experience the blessings of our lives and circumstances, to be vigilant, compassionate, and brave. Strengthen us when we are afraid. Help us to channel our anger so that it motivates us to action. Help us to humble, be humble in our fear, knowing that as vulnerable as we feel, there are those who are right now at greater risk, and that it is our holy work to stand with them. Help us to taste the sweetness of liberty, to not take for granted the freedoms won in generations past. Source of all life, guide our leaders with righteousness, that they may use their influence and authority to speak truth and act for justice. May all who dwell in this country enjoy its freedoms and be protected by its laws. May the nation use its power and wealth to be the voice for justice, peace, and equality for all who dwell on the earth. May we be strong and have the courage to be bold in our action and deep in our compassion to uproot bigotry, intolerance, and violence in all of its forms, to celebrate the many faces of God reflected in the wondrous diversity of humanity, to welcome the stranger and the immigrant, and to honor the gift of those who seek refuge and possibility here, as they have since before the nation was born. Let justice well up like waters and righteousness like the mighty stream. Amen. In this time of crisis, I send you all love. Hey, everyone. I'm back. It's time for the fourth glass. Four, there we go. Fourth glass of wine. Uh, the prayer is the same. You should know it by now. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melechalam, Berei Puri Hagafen. In English, we praise God who makes the fruit of the vine. There we go. That's all for me, Lila Tov. I love this bit. This is Miriam's cup. Uh, and this ritual is to honor women. Uh, and it's to symbolize Miriam's well, which was a magical source of water during those 40 years when the Israelites wandered the desert. And Miriam's cup also celebrates the critical role of all brave women, past and present, which is something we can all drink to. Mm. And we also have Elijah's cup. There is a beautiful tradition, and I love this when I first saw it, of people filling Elijah's empty cup with wine from their own. So I'm just going to enact that now, and you can do that too. So join me. Okay, I'm just pouring some of my own wine into Elijah's cup. Elijah's not here, so I may drink his uh, as well as my own. But the point of it is that the act of pouring our own wine reminds us that we must all contribute our best talents and energies to help fulfill Elijah's promise of a peaceful world. And tradition says that Elijah will return to earth one day to signal the arrival of the Messiah and the end of intolerance, hatred, and the end of war. I could have eaten more, I 
could have eaten more, but it's a fecomentar. The Seder rituals and all those victuals, the evening was sublime. I had my matzo with charoset, and matzo dipped in chocolate too. I drank down all my wine, and now I'm feeling fine. How good to share this I'm just so blown away by the comments and the love that we have received from so many of you who are watching. Uh, I hope that one thing that you will take away from tonight, I mean, you can take a bunch of things away from tonight, but one thing I really hope that you remember is there was almost nothing that we did tonight that you can't do at your own Seder because we have all of the free resources online for you at jubelong.com. We have, you've seen it, you have it. We have the Passover Haggadah. We have a booklet for Hanukkah. Oh my God, it's so great. There's skits, skits and everything, skits and songs. We have for Rosh Hashanah, we have something we call the Rosh Haggadah. You can use it on Rosh Hashanah. And whether you go to synagogue or not, you can use it. We have something called the Yom Kippur cheat sheet that you can use on, Rosh, on Yom Kippur. We have, it's not just for holidays, for, um, for like, like experiences. We have a fantastic booklet with amazing readings if you ever, if you need for a bris or a baby naming. Any, um, like when things happen and you need some Judaism, you go to Jubilong, there is, amazing, um, really touching work that we've done for Shiva and for death and dying, which helped to sort of, how do you make, how do you create that space? We also have one for Thanksgiving, a really terrific Jubilong booklet. And last but not least, my super favorite um, is Shabbat um, because it comes every week. You can do it whenever you, well, any Friday that you wanna do it. And Shabbat is packed with songs and skits and readings and really out of all of them it is um it may even be the best maybe not better than this uh than Passover but it is really fantastic so they're all at jubelong.com they're all free they allow you to sort of create your own Jewish space however you want to do it now um before we get to the Afi Komen I want to thank my co-host Alicia Reiner and her family and Joanna Cole. You guys, you jumped in at the very beginning and you've been so unbelievably helpful. I just really thank you. Also, Drew Brody and Clay Brown for their fantastic, their beautiful music and Senator Cory Booker and everyone else who helped to make tonight, who helped make tonight happen. I also especially want to thank my Jubilong co-founder, Stacy Stewart, who I send all of my love to, and our fantastic um, staff, Lauren Grossman and Kathy Alagna, and everybody. There were so many people who made tonight possible, but now it is time for the Avi Komen. This is so darn cool. So basically, happy Passover. Stay safe and healthy. And now for the Avi Komen. Hi, I'm a piece of matzah, and I'm here to tell you how our virtual afikomen hunt is gonna work. Since I can't be in your living rooms, I've hidden the virtual afikomen on Jew Belong's Instagram, and I'm about to give you a clue for how to find it. Isn't that a Passover miracle? When you find the answer, send an email to hello at jewbelong.com, along with your Venmo or... PayPal information. The first 50 people to send us the right answers will win eight bucks and 18 cents each. Get it? 
Kai? Uh, okay, enough already. Here's the clue. How many posts on Jubilong's Instagram contain pictures of potatoes? French fries, latkes, Mr. Potato Head. If it's a potato, you better count it. Well, that's the clue. Good luck finding that Afi Komen. Stay healthy, happy Passover, and good night. Roll the credits. Ah, oh, fabulous Cass we got here. Ah. Oh. And the people who put this together, ah, uh, I'm failing. Are you still here? It's over. Go eat your dinner. Good night.